Welcome back to the shop, you wrench warriors. Today, we're gonna go over removing and reinstalling your front suspension fork. Now, you may wanna remove it to service it yourself, or you may wanna send it in for service, but either way, it's gotta come off of there. And while we're in there, we can also service or replace the headset bearings, so we'll go over that. All right, in the video, first thing we'll do is we'll go over all the tools you need, and then we'll go through step-by-step step to make sure you have the knowledge and confidence to do it right the first time. Let's get started. Here's the stuff you're gonna need. You're gonna need some isopropyl alcohol. You're gonna need a bicycle torque wrench. I went over that in an earlier video. You're gonna need some Allen keys and metric, some bicycle grease, a mallet, some rubber gloves and safety glasses if you're into the whole safety thing, and some shop towels. The last thing you're gonna need here is a bicycle mechanics clamp. Now this is not 100% necessary, but boy, Holy cow, is it gonna make your life easier. This is made by Venzo, and I went over it in an earlier video if you wanna check that out. Okay, our first step is we'll get our bike up in our clamp. Next, let's get the front wheel off the bike. This particular quick release, you just undo it here. You gotta reach around the other side and loosen the nut on the other side. Sometimes if it doesn't come off, what you have to do is pull this out, get a new bite on it like that, and then loosen it. Okay, we backed it off quite a bit. Now we're just gonna drop it out of there. Okay, next thing you wanna do before you go any further is take lots of pictures of how everything went together. You're gonna to want pictures of these headset spacers. You're gonna want pictures of how the brake caliper attached and where all the washers went. You're gonna want detailed photos. Okay, now I'm gonna rotate the bike up so I don't have to bend over to work on it. All right, the next thing we're gonna remove is the brake caliber. Anytime you have the wheel out, never accidentally squeeze the brakes. Just be careful of that, because if you do that, you're gonna to come together without that rotor and it's gonna cause problems with the caliber. Let's rip it off. It takes a uh, five millimeter Allen key. Stay tuned to the end. We'll talk about how to align these brake calipers so they don't rub at the end. There's a trick for that. Keep your thumb over the washers. They'll fall all over the place. Ask me how I know. Son of a gun. These washers, one's cupped and one's cupped too, but the other way, convex and concave and they can move all around. So that's how you align the caliper. And there's a quick and dirty way to do it, and I'll show you that when we reinstall it. Right, I'm gonna put the washers in the order they go on, and I'm just gonna loosely thread them on to our fork here. All right, next obstacle is this little cable mount here on the crown. It takes a 2.5 millimeter. Take that off. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a zip tie, and I'm gonna zip tie this caliper to one of my grips here so that the caliper doesn't beat the bike up. Okay, let's rotate the bike right side up. Now let's take a four millimeter Allen key and loosen up these two clamps. You don't have to completely remove the bolt. Careful with your Allen key as you go past your frame. This is carbon fiber, you don't wanna be gouging that up. Now the only thing holding the front forks on is this bolt here that goes down through the star nut in the steerer tube. So you're gonna to wanna to do is support the fork, take your five millimeter Allen key, stick it in the top here. And we're gonna to wanna to back this all the way out. Take the bolt out. Take the little cap on top off. Then you can pull the um, gooseneck off. You can pull all your spacers out. Keep track of these. Remember where they went and how many you had. We're gonna pull this top cap off. Now we're gonna slowly fold, pull the fork off out the bottom. Watch out that your bottom headset bearing doesn't come falling out on the floor. So just reach up in there and pull that bearing out. Mine isn't coming out very easy, so I'm gonna pull the fork out first. 
carefully let the handlebars dangle. Not to be careful not to kink any lines. We've got our fork out, so we're gonna set that aside carefully. I'm gonna reach up in here and pull my bottom headset bearing out. This thing is crunchy. So all this needs to be cleaned up and serviced. We'll go over that too. Now we can pull out our top headset bearing and be careful of this little piece here. Make sure that stays with the bearing. Now we're down to bare races. Our fork is laying on the table. Let's take a rag and carefully support our handlebars and we'll mobilize it through a convenient place in the frame. In my case, it's gonna be the water bottle cage. Now let's uh, clean the grease off our steer tube here. All right, we got our fork out. We got all our parts laid out nice and neat. Got everything cleaned up. And reinstallation is just the reverse of removal. No, I'm just kidding, guys. We'll go over the rest of it. All right, we've got everything on the table that needs to be cleaned up on the headset. First thing we're gonna do is take a pick, start pulling these seals out. I'm gonna try to be as gentle as possible, not to hurt anything. Pull the seal off the other side. Careful not to pry up in one spot, you'll bend the seal. Now that we've got both seals out, you can see the ball bearings in there. So what we gotta do is get all that old grease out. Next thing I'm gonna do is begrudgingly put on gloves. And you're just gonna take a dollop of this grease here, put it on your palm. You're gonna take the bearing and you're gonna work it. Take the larger side and you're gonna push the grease up into it and then against your palm. And each time you're gonna grab the next little dollop off of there until you see grease spill at the top like that. Okay. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna work our way all the way around the bearing. And occasionally we're gonna grab the grease off the bearing. Put it back on our palm. Work new grease in there. Now don't grab the grease that comes out the top because that could be contaminated with the old grease and dirt. I'm trying to push the old stuff out through the top. But this stuff here on the inside is good to go. And you're gonna repeat this process until you've pushed grease out through the top all the way around. Once we've gone all the way around, we're gonna to wanna to take a plastic, something sharp, I have a plastic razor blade. You can take a piece of thin cardboard and we're just gonna to wanna to cut all the grease off the top here instead of wiping it because we don't wanna push it back down in there. So this grease is contaminated, put that aside. And this bearing here feels really smooth, no grit or anything to it. Put that one on a clean paper towel. Now we're gonna do the same thing to this bearing here. First thing we gotta do is pull out this, I forget what that's called, and let's pop the seal out of this one. We're gonna work our pick around so we don't bend the seal. They have a little bit of metal in them. So this one doesn't have a seal on the other side, but it does have a little gap. We'll push up through this large side until it starts spilling out from the gap inside here. Here, let's wipe off our glove here because it's got, uh, it's got dirt and schmoo over it. We don't want to push that into our new bearing. So we're scooping and pushing, dragging along our palm. Take a little bite, push it up. This is called packing the bearings. We're gonna work our way all the way around until we've got a little grease to ooze out all the way around. The stuff oozing out of there is pretty dark, pretty dirty. Okay, we've run, run all the way around this bearing. I'm gonna take my razor blade, scrape the, the old nasty stuff out. See the difference in color. We'll wipe the outside of this bearing off. Now let's clean the little cap here, a little dust cap that goes on the top headset bearing. We'll set that aside. Now let's focus on our seals. Careful not to bend these, they're pretty fragile. I'm using a new clean spot with every new seal.
Okay, we got all our seals cleaned up. Let's take a look at these two seals, see if they're different sizes. Yes, one's bigger than the other. So we'll put the larger one on the larger side. The metal looking color goes towards the balls, ball bearings on the inside. So we'll stick those in. All you do is just push it in. You can use the edge of your finger just to push it in all the way around. Okay, that side's back in. Let's do the other side. Same thing, metal goes towards the balls. If you can't tell, sometimes you can see your little pry mark where you removed it. Okay, this side's going in. A little bit of grease is squirting out. That means we filled it up. That's good. There. Now we have a perfectly serviceable bear. A perfectly serviceable bearing. It's nice and smooth and tight. Feels good. Let's put this one back together. This one, we can see a little wear on the one side where the balls were rubbing on it. So we'll put that face down. I can't really reach down in there too well, so I'm just gonna use the tip of this mechanical pencil with the lead pushed all the way in. And I'm just gonna run that around the perimeter. You don't have to go crazy pushing that in. Should, should just kind of slot in for you. Now we have two great condition headset bearings ready to go. When it comes to cleaning this bottom race here, if you've got a split, you're in luck. You can simply just take your fingernails pull it up and off of there then that makes it easy to clean all around here with a rag and all around here use some isopropyl alcohol clean that all up put it back now if you don't have a split in your ring just leave it in place don't go trying to drive it off with a screwdriver or anything leave it in place just take some q-tips and some brushes and clean it up as best you can at the base of the steer tube i still have a little grime so we're just going to use some alcohol clean that up Okay, our steer tube's clean. Let's put on our cleaned up uh, lower bearing race. Okay, mine was a split race, but if yours is not, get yourself a section of one and a half inch pipe. Put a coupling on one end, a cap on the other, and just tap your race down nice and evenly with that, with a hammer on top. Let's put on our lower bearing. So let's go get the bicycle. Okay, the first thing we wanna do is make sure our races are cleaned up. So for that, we're just gonna use our rubbing alcohol. Don't go crazy with cleaners if you have a carbon fiber frame. And our bottom race is aluminum, we'll clean that. Okay, now that both races are clean, we're gonna move our handlebars. We're gonna to wanna to find the natural cable position. It looks like this cable will be routed on this side. That'd be hard to get that over there once the fork is installed. So go ahead and we'll set this back. On our fork, we're gonna make sure we have just a real nice light coat of grease on the outside here. It's going into an aluminum housing. So let's just prevent some corrosion. When I say light coating, I'm talking about just a film. Okay, before you start trying to insert the fork, make sure you have all the parts you need within arm's reach. Okay, so now we're just gonna push the fork up through the bottom. Now in my case, my upper race is carbon fiber, so I'm not going to coat this with grease. Just put that straight in there. Don't want the grease to deteriorate the carbon fiber at all. We're gonna put in our top, our top little race here. I'm gonna put the split towards the back. This top cap, you might wanna put a light coat of grease on it, like just a film because it's got an O-ring inside here. Okay, I'm gonna put my label towards the back because I like the way that looks. Then we're gonna put our height spacers on here. Place our handlebars on top here. My top cap has an off-center hole. It's cammed with a plus or minus on top. Now, if I stare down inside here and I look, it lines up best with the plus towards the back. So we're gonna put our screw in the middle and this screw here is using a five millimeter Allen key. Now this screw does not hold your handlebars on the bike. What they do is they put tension on the stack, the preload on the top and bottom headset bearings. So you don't wanna go crank it on this thing like crazy. Check to make sure everything looks seated, looks good. 
try to rock it in the frame. Don't feel anything. And then we're going to turn it back and forth a little bit. Kind of squeeze out any excess grease or anything. Then we're going to tighten it just a little bit more. And I'm going to use the short end to tension this. That feels pretty good. If you go cranking on that, you can crush, you can push your bearings through your races. So don't do that. Okay, once you do that, you can let go of your fork. Okay, now I'm going to do some light tension on these pinch bolts. Not very much. We're going to torque them later. Next, let's turn the bike upside down. Okay, next, let's cut the cable tie that we have holding our caliper here. Okay, make sure you route your brake caliper like it was before. Refer to your pictures you took before disassembly. This one routes right in here on the inside of the leg. I think most of them do. I'm gonna take our brake caliper bolts and knock any kind of crap off of them. Just get them as clean as you can so you get an accurate torque reading. Okay, this is how my washer stack works out. Small washer, concave washer, convex washer up against the caliper, and then a convex one, the flat side against the caliper, then a concave, just like that. I'm gonna put a drop thread locker on here, thread it into the top hole. You only have to go a couple turns. We're gonna do the same bolt stack here. Thread that in by hand. I'm gonna take our five millimeter Allen key, turn them in the rest of the way. Don't go crazy tightening these. Just leave them a little bit loose, just like that. That's gonna give you a little bit of wiggle. You want them to be able to wobble and go in and out towards, in and out towards the wheel. Now we'll take our 2.5 millimeter Allen key and we'll put in our little Brake line routing clamp. Don't go crazy on this, just a plastic clamp. That's good. Okay, let's turn the bike right side up. Okay, remember anytime your wheel is off and your rotor is not in the caliper, do not squeeze the brakes. You'll screw everything up. Okay, now let's carefully mount our front wheel. We're gonna guide our rotor into our brake caliper. Wiggle the brake caliper as needed to line that up. Mount your wheel as normal. Okay, now that we've got our front wheel mounted, we're gonna take our torque wrench. I did a review of this one in an earlier video. I'll leave a link in the description. And I've got it set for eight Newton meters. Now the manual calls for 10 on my shocks, but I've actually had these washers, these concave washers split at 10 Newton meters. So I'm gonna use eight. That's part of the reason I'm using the blue thread locker, but you should always use the recommended torque in the manual for your particular bike. Let's do an alignment on our front caliper. What we're gonna do is we're gonna turn in the two mounting studs so they're snug. We're gonna back them off a quarter turn. Now we're gonna grab our front brake lever, pump it a couple times, make sure the caliper is moving. You want it to be free to move. Okay, now hold down the brake very hard, like you're doing a panic stop, and we're gonna turn these in. We're gonna work back and forth a little at a time all while holding down the brake until it's snug. Let go of the brake, check your alignment. Shouldn't hear any scraping or anything. If you do hear scraping, either your alignment failed or your rotor slightly warped. Okay, if your alignment doesn't work out, see if your rotor's bent. What you're gonna do is look down here at the pads and watch your rotor. See if it travels laterally from side to side, touching each pad. If your rotor is only hitting one side, that means you didn't align your brake caliper properly. But if you see it going back and forth, it means it's bent. If your alignment doesn't succeed, back these off a quarter turn. Pump your brakes a few times. Hold your brake down. And snug them back up working back and forth. Let go of your brake, check your alignment. And shouldn't hear anything, no scraping or anything. Okay, that's a success. 
Once our alignment's successful, we're gonna hold down our brake. I'm gonna take our torque wrench and torque them both to eight Newton meters. Check your alignment again. Should be silent. Okay, the only thing left to do is align the front wheel to the handlebars. I find it's easiest to do it with the bike on the ground. Look down your stem here and look down the center line of your tire. Oftentimes they have a little mold mark. And I can see that my handlebars are off, so I'm gonna stand over the bike. I'm gonna hold the wheel. Remember, we didn't, we didn't tighten these very much, so we could do this alignment later. That looks perfect. Okay, so we're gonna torque these down to five Newton meters. Torque spec is printed right here conveniently enough. If you look at modern bikes, a lot of times they'll give you the torque spec. So let's go ahead and work back and forth on here. Okay, five on that side. Five on that side. Check this side again. And this side again. They affect each other's torque. Okay, we're good. Handlebars are straight. Everything's tight. Double check all your fasteners. Ready to go hit the trails. Hey, if you guys found this stuff useful and this helped get your bike back in order, please consider subscribing. It really help out the channel a lot. Really enjoy making these videos for you guys and I look forward to seeing you in the shop again. Have a good one. All right, the bike's wife, uh, the bike's wife is ready for the next trail.